This radio here is the Philips model L4X98T-72 from around uh, 1962. There was a date written on the uh, inside of the case. This is apparently quite a rare radio. Uh, search for that model number only turned up a handful of results. Um, Radio Museum only had some pictures of this model. They didn't have the schematic, unfortunately, which I'll get into in a little bit. Um, it's a fairly typical looking Philips set. The main thing that's special about this particular model is that it has FM. Most of Philips' similar looking uh, sets are AM and long wave only. I'm not sure where this set was all intended to be sold. You can see that FM goes up to 108, but it's labeled as VHF, not FM, like we call it here in the US. And uh, the AM band is marked in both meters and kilocycles. And of course, long wave isn't really used in the US for much. It was only ever used for uh, beacons in the US. Perhaps this was just made for general export. Most of Philips sets that were sold in the USA were under the Norelco brand. And you can see this one just says Philips. So, not sure what the full story of this one is. Perhaps it's one of those uh, models that was meant for sale in Canada. It was uh, completely dead when I got it. It had a, you know, hard short or whatever you want to call it. Uh, one of the output transistors was shorted. So, I replaced that. Uh, after that, it was working on AM. And it turned out that one of the uh, FM transistors was also shorted due to the usual uh, tin whisker problem. Uh, just disconnecting the shield lead got that going again. I replaced all the electrolytic capacitors. The set was playing great on both AM and FM. I went to put it back together and uh, it just dropped dead on AM. Took it apart. It worked for like a few seconds and then stopped. I'm still not 100% sure what the cause is despite a fair bit of time invested looking into it. Pretty unfortunate. It's always how it seems to go though. Everything's working great until it gets put back together. It does still work well on FM though. So let's hear that first. Trade around the world. It is indisputable that it has made our economy stronger. It has. There's the volume. That, uh, our business tone is here. Most competitive in the world. But a new U.S. EU trade deal with which the president is pushing is not particularly popular. Uh, not, not for. FM HD2 Corning WSQA FM HD2. Hello, radio fans. This is Toots. National Public Radio with us, Click and Clack, the Tappet Brothers, and we're broadcasting this week from the Creative Writing Department. Might be overloading. I ended up bypassing the uh, last AM uh, IF stage with a capacitor after isolating the problem to that section and not being able to find out what the true cause of the problem was. I just wanted to have some reception on AM. I may revisit this later uh, once I've got parts. I think the problem is the IF transformer itself, but I should probably do more checking. Got a lot of projects here. There it is. Everything is secondary to the return of the Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
looking at each other. Two to one, three to two, uh, all kinds of scores like that. At least the strongest stations do come in. Although for some reason, AM680 does not come in clearly. Auto parts. Let's get you back to the... I may have used too small a capacitor to bypass the uh, the stage there. I had initially tried it with a, I think it was a 0.3 microfarad one, and I put a 0.2 in. Because I didn't want to use one of my high voltage rated ones. Okay, first of all, then how it all connects and comes together. But then, what? Another odd thing on this radio is that it has a uh, input for uh, phonograph on the bottom there. I'll show you guys that in a minute. See, it was made in Holland. Take off the battery cover. You undo these screws here. They're both supposed to have a retainer on the back, but one of them is missing. Runs on uh, six D cells. You notice the battery instructions there are in English. Uh, it normally would be very easy to take the back cover off of this. It's actually quite annoying now because uh, that one screw there is rusted in place. You would normally just have to take these two screws out. There's a connection for an external antenna there. That was the only thing I should have needed to solder when putting this thing back together. I you guys love seeing the inside of these radios, I'm going to take the trouble of uh, opening this thing up. You can see the model number there and the serial number. 30933. This thing clearly had battery leakage in it before and I had to scrape off several of the contacts. It also seized up um, this screw here, so I ended up having to remove the screw that attaches this bracket here to the side. I know you guys like seeing inside of these radios, so I figured I'd uh, give you a nice view of the internals here and all the crap I had to do. Here's a uh, layout diagram. That OC-171 there is the one I had to uh, lift up the shield lead on because it has continuity to uh, the other pins which it's not supposed to have. This is the transformer I believe is bad. I bypassed it with a cap underneath. You can see I also lifted up the lead uh, shield lead on this one. Thinking that might be the problem, but no. And uh... This transistor was noisy, so I replaced it with a different OC75 I had. And you can just see all the electrolytic caps I changed out all over the place in here. And those are the replacement NPN transistors. They're a little bit, or PNP rather. They're a little bit smaller than the uh, originals that were in there. It's got kind of a cool mechanism for the volume and, and tone knobs. You can see that it's designed to only let the tone control turn part way. There's like a linkage that connects the tone knob over to the actual control. This is the only cap that was really bad in, in causing the sound to be distorted. Uh, it was a 0.5 microfarad uh, Electrolytic, I replaced it with a 0.47 uh, film cap. That improved the tone. Got a very homemade looking tuning cap in there. Who knows how long ago FM went out, but the antennas are in perfect shape, so perhaps a long time ago. Oh, and there's a date there, uh, 8-11-62. Presumably when this thing was made. This wire is supposed to be on that little peg there. To keep it out of the tuning cap. I 
These weird things seem to be tubular ceramic caps. Alright, I think I'm done rambling on here. Thanks for watching.